All right, folks, this is Symbolic reporting out to you on the Council of Twelve show that took place yesterday, February 6th, 2010, on blogtalkradio.com slash Council of One Two. The show was Our Laws Made to Hurt Blacks. And we had some distinguished participants yesterday. Our main guest was Representative Pam Stevenson of the Georgia House of Representatives. We also had criminal defense attorney Lynn Watley and uh, George Ronald Gregg from New York. Uh, we also had a lot of callers. It was fascinating. Are the laws made to hurt blacks? Uh, there is a differential impact in the laws. Uh, criminal sentencing, banking laws, foreclosure laws, lending laws, um, these can have a disproportionately adverse impact upon the black community. Who makes the laws? Well, for the most part, the laws are made by legislators, uh, oftentimes sitting in a room, sometimes alone, writing the law. Um, they tend to uh, base that on their own experience and on their own constituencies, and so what do those people look like? Uh, that, that really comes down to the question. Now, what can the black community do? What can all our communities do? What can anybody do? Well, it comes down to holding the elected officials accountable. Um, you know, there are, there are probably more um, elected black officials now than any time in the past, yet how much has really changed? You know, we have two-strike laws. We have three-strike laws. We have uh, inordinate sentencing, and we have the same old problem of discrimination. Of even if the law uh, appears fair and equal on the surface, how that filters through the mind of law enforcement, how that filters through the mind of the prosecutors, the solicitors, the judges, that can have a tremendous impact. So we have two sides of this. We have the laws as they're written, which may have an adverse impact, and we have the minds of the people who are basically. Uh, deciding on the law and enforcing the law, and that comes down to the same old question of bias, whether it's conscious or unconscious, uh, bias and um, and stereotyping. So uh, this is what needs to be uh, needs to be worked against and overcome. Um, Representative Stevenson is a member of the the Georgia Legislative Black Caucus, uh, and they will set out issues. Uh, for instance, minimum sentencing, two-strike law, banking laws, foreclosure laws, lending laws, and they will vote on those. They'll vote uh, together on those. They'll make people aware of those issues, um, and they're very dedicated, uh, very dedicated to it. What can the average person do? Well, hold the public officials accountable. Hold the legislators accountable. Hold the um, judges accountable. Many of them in many areas are elected. You can hold them accountable. Uh, prosecutors hold them accountable, especially if they're elected. If they're appointed, hold accountable whoever appointed them. You know, uh, check the report cards. How are these people voting? Um, you know, you can always get those. Those are published. You can call their offices and ask for them. Uh, the Council of Twelve will be building a tool actually to to put the report card out there as to you know who is voting how on which issues uh, dividing this also probably by race so people can compare the votes of the uh, elected black officials with the white officials and see if they're voting the same on the same issues so that's a tool that will be forthcoming um, uh, hold community meetings uh, this is an election year uh, so you can actually ask politicians legislators judges how do you feel about the laws that were passed a few years ago that are having a net negative impact? Uh, and you can hold them accountable after the fact as well. Hold community meetings before the, the uh, assembly session begins. Let them know these are the issues we are, um, we are interested in. Here's how we want you to vote as your constituents. Um, as citizens, and then after the vote takes place, look at their report card, see how they're voted, and contact them and say, hey, look, we told you before this session, this is how we wanted you to vote. You have no, not voted that way, and hold them, therefore, accountable. Fax them, phone them, email them, write letters. It has an impact. So, um, you know, most of the elected officials have email addresses, and you can, you can do that. Um, and uh, that's the way it goes. It comes down to votes and voices, folks. Uh, who do we vote for? Vote for them based on their record and express our voices before the elections and after the votes. Um, 
Um, we also talked about the problem of assimilation. You know, we have a lot of people uh, uh, representing us. It, the issue is assimilation versus representation. Is an elected official simply uh, assimilating to the status quo culture and merging with it, or are they remaining true to their own individual differences? Are they representing people? And for me, this comes down to a diversity issue. Diversity, the core of diversity, is valuing differences. Valuing differences in others, but valuing differences in ourselves, too, you know, so that we don't assimilate uh, and g give up our own cultural elements, you know, and just assimilate to some other culture. Um, because then we have just, um, you know, we've just become, well, we've lost. We've lost, uh, lost our individuality in that sense, our cultural individuality in that sense. Uh, you know, the, the minimum sentencing laws and the two-strike laws, um, you know, these render justice mechanical. And justice should never be mechanical. It needs to be tailored to the individual. It needs to be tailored to the individual situation. And it needs to be tailored towards what is going to help or heal that individual. There is more to justice than punishment. Punishment is the lowest form of justice. Uh, justice should have elements in it that teach, that heal, that rehabilitate, and that improve the individual. Um, and give the individual a chance and a chance to change. Uh, so, assimilation. Uh, people, no one should assimilate. Everyone should remain true to their individuality and to their individual cultures and not sacrifice that for the sake of membership, being uh, for the sake of acceptance, for the sake of membership, for the sake of, uh, you know, merging, losing our identities is, is never a, a good thing. Um, um, we talked about the importance of the, the black press. You know, a, a lot of high-profile cases, the media um, basically has an incredible effect on the outcome, and the media is not necessarily uh, representative of people, and uh, it looks like the, there are pockets where the black press is still active and still strong, but uh, it can be in decline, it may be in decline, and so uh, I, I think it's important that the black press be reinvigorated uh, and rejuvenated to balance out some of the uh, self-serving media opinion, which comes from a different, a, whole, a, a completely different point of view. Um, hold community meetings. Get set. Look at the issues. Set forth an agenda. Identify your issues and let the elected officials be known. Remember, I mean judges too, not just uh, uh, legislators. Um, uh, uh, Representative Stevenson says we should be putting forth model legislation to affect the whole nation. Um, we also have to approach things on a community level as well. We don't want our young people to be, you know, trapped in the justice system, whether it's the adult justice system or the system or the juvenile justice system. Because once you're trapped in the system and you're pulled in, it becomes a revolving door. So it's important that. Uh, we as people, we as communities, uh, you know, uh, teach our young, and we need a sort of a new, good, positive discipline in our communities uh, to basically protect uh, protect our young. They're the next generation. You know, we have we may we may have made a lot of advances over the years, but we have really lost a generation of youth, which is a really really terrible thing. We can't allow that to happen. We can't allow the generation behind us to fall. You know we have to hold up that generation like others held us up before. Um, so we want to check the moral compass of our elected officials, uh, legislators, judges, prosecutors. Uh, prosecutors need to hold law enforcement accountable. Again, um, it comes down to an issue of assimilation and identity. Uh, you know, we don't want to accidentally join the some version of the old boys club. You know, we want to retain uh, uh, dignity and strength, and that can mean prosecutors holding law, law enforcement accountable when they're abusing the system, and not just joining in and saying, oh, well, you know, we're on, uh, you know, one particular side of the equation. There is no, the particular side of the equation is justice, not uh, who wins what, you know. Quite often I think that prosecutors uh, become obsessed with winning, 
you know. Uh, and it's not a question of winning, it's a question of justice and truth. So uh, that is the essence of the show, folks. Great show. Link in the description box. Listen to the show. Fascinating discussion. Uh, tremendous show. I encourage everybody to listen to the show. Uh, also, tune in next week. We have a show every Saturday, 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, blogtalkradio.com slash Council of One Two. Council of Twelve. Uh, thank you very much for your time and for listening. And uh, health, happiness, and prosperity to everybody and justice for all.